2005. I've deployed probably overseas in different various missions, eight years out of the 15. I'm currently in an advisory role, which is a capacity development role, dealing with um, the Criminal Investigations Unit based in Port Moresby, but also um, deals with the provincial areas of PNG as well. Uh, we have a broad range of um, portfolios that we deal with, um, the range from homicide, sexual offences, um, motor squad, fraud squad, armed robbery, and as well we deal with forensics and internal affairs. So we're dealing with a broad range of criminal investigation units. Uh, initially, once the, um, the COVID pandemic was worldwide, here in Papua New Guinea, they initiated a response within their particular area around Baroka, where we were based. Uh, the Baroko market's one of the main markets within this area, uh, where a lot of people bring all their produce and even some of the produce from the highlands comes down. Patrolling through the markets and all that. They were done on a daily basis when the COVID operation first started here in PNG and they were more of a, a um, proactive reassurance patrol. So it was on two fronts, it was to reassure the public that the police were there to, to provide an oversight and security, but also uh, for our counterparts, the police we work with to show them that we were electing to, to stay with them um, during that time. All of us here in PNG had the option to return back to Australia if we wished to do so. I felt that it was important, and, and the mission commander and, and everybody that's here, felt it was important that we um, maintained a presence in uh, PNG while they were dealing with the pandemic not only from a relation perspective, but also from a friendship perspective with the people that we work with, uh, both in the community and the police. I think it strengthened the relationship um, because they saw that we elected to stay with them um, during the pandemic. Normally I was getting home every couple of months, uh, but I haven't been home since um, January the 11th. I came back into mission and I doubt whether I'll be getting home for another couple of months place is a big strain and I think it's a bigger strain on the family than what it is on sometimes us that are away um, because they don't have that support that they would if you were at home. I remember one, one instance and the wife said to me, you just don't realise how much you've missed the kids growing up. I sort of sat back and looked at it and I thought, you're correct. We get caught up in our own employment and what we're doing with work and yeah, sometimes families do suffer as a consequence. The first sign that she's having trouble or not coping, I'd come home. The missions at the end of the day, they always say, your family will always be there, work won't. So I've always put that in my mind, your family will always be there. Hey darling, you got Nayana down the beach, have you? How does she like the water? And yeah, she looks like she wants to jump in and have a swim. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too early yet. Uh, because I've been on a lot of deployments, I think emotionally you become, you adapt to the situation that you're in. Yes, it is hard. Um, obviously, I look at it from a policing perspective that people see you as the supporting mechanism to get through difficult situations. So if the police can't cope with the situations, who's going to cope with it? And that's just been my coping mechanism um, throughout my whole police career. Oh, I'd love to, to be on overseas deployments for the rest of my career. I just love the different cultures and the relationships you can build, the different operating environments, plus the broad range of experience that you get here that you wouldn't get back in your policing um, environment back home.